Webflow's interactions tools are really powerful, but there is one thing that you still can't do, and that is you can't stagger animations on page load. So as you can see here, these are the exact same animations. They're just looping over the same time period. But what we've done is we've staggered them so they start at different times. So I'm going to show you how uh, uh, the workaround for how you can do this. Okay, so we're in Webflow and we have these Zag objects over here. We have four of them. They're all different colors. So we're going to add an animation, um, and it's going to be an element trigger. Mouse click on tap. So when we click it, it's going to run this animation, start an animation, and then we'll add a new one. This new animation we'll just call Zag Rotate, and then we're going to add a rotate action. So after two seconds, we'll say we want it to rotate 30 degrees on the Z axis and then we'll add an ease in out and then we'll duplicate it. And then after another two seconds, we'll keep the ease in out and we'll rotate it to the uh, negative 30 degrees. Um, and then we'll just hit play here. See, it's this blue one underneath the black one. Perfect. Now, if we want it to loop, we can hit loop right here and we can preview it and it's going to loop. So every two seconds, it's going to go 30 degrees, another two seconds, negative 32 degrees. And it's just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. Now, if we want to add it to a second one, see we have four here. So if we add it to Zag 2, we can come up here, do the exact same thing, element trigger, mouse click on tap, start an animation, and then we can hit the three dots to duplicate it. And now we have Zag rotate and it's just going to be whichever button, whichever button it is that we click, that's going to be the trigger. So Zag 2, and it's doing the exact same thing. So now it's this purple one. When I hit play, the purple one's moving. That's great, that's awesome. And if we loop it, we can preview it, we can hit loop, and now it's just gonna loop over and over and over again. The issue is, is that Zag 1 and Zag 2 are on top of each other, and we're not gonna be able to see, so if we if we do the exact same thing to Zag 3 and Zag 4, we're not gonna be able to see anything underneath Zag 4. So what we have to do is we have to stagger them so that they start at different times. Now, you might think you can come in here and just add a delay, but the issue is, if I had a delay of one second, it's now, I'll save it, it's now, when I hit preview, going to delay one second each and every time that it loops, which means on each loop, it's going to get one second more behind the rest of the animations, which is not what we want. So what we have to do here is get rid of the delay. We're going to repeat the same action each and every time for Zag 3 and Zag 4. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a script to be able to click the buttons automatically at the time that we want to click them. So for Zag 3, we're just just going to copy this. We're just going to create three different timed animations. We're going to loop them. Just make sure it's working. It's working. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for Zag 4. And we're going to duplicate Zag rotate 4 and then loop. Okay, now that's working perfectly. So if we go to the published, finished published website, we can see here. So right now it's on a click animation, but if it were on a page load animation, what we'd expect to see is them rotating just on top of each other and all we could see is the black one. So if we click the black, we'll be able to see the others underneath, but that's just because the other animations haven't started yet. So what we need to do to stagger them is we need to add a JavaScript function to be able to uh, click them at different times and basically stagger them. So we got to remember your classes here because that's what it's going off of. Or you can add IDs in here and target the IDs. But for this case, we're just going to target the classes. So if we come in here and then we add our script. So let's change this over to Zag1. That's our class. And then we're going to change it to 500 milliseconds. So after 500 milliseconds, what this is saying is it after this time, 500 milliseconds, it's going to click this element right here. So um, let's do the exact same thing. Let's copy this and paste it right underneath and let's target Zag2 and let's uh, change this to a thousand milliseconds. So that's one second. So what we expect to see if we publish this is two of these Zags moving and animating on a stagger and the other two just sitting there and let's load the page and boom we have the blue one and the pink one and they're staggered just like we'd expect um, the reason why the other two aren't moving is because they're based on click functions and we actually have to click them in order to move them so we have to add um, two more scripts for the other two zags to make sure that they are also moving uh, whenever we want them to so we're going to target zag three and we're going to change it to 1500 milliseconds and then copy and paste that same thing 
change it to zag4, and we'll start it after 2,000 milliseconds. So now what we should expect to see is all four of them um, stagger when we load the page. So the page loads, and boom, it's clicking them one by one automatically, and it's starting their animations. Now, it's working correctly, but the one issue with this is that if you now click them, it's going to restart it at the time you don't want. So it's going to get off its stagger. So you can see I'm clicking here and it's kind of looping weirdly. So what we can do to fix that is we can add just a little bit of um, a little bit of CSS magic. And what we're going to do is we're going to target our zag lines, which is the parent div right here. We're going to target that and we're going to say pointer events none and then we'll close that and then close the style and we'll save and close and what that does is it makes it so that all of these elements are now unclickable so if someone if a user accidentally clicks one of them and restarts this looping animation now they can't so if you come down here see I can't click them and they're just going to be looping over and over and over again just like you want them to um, and you can change the times you can start them whenever you want you can start one of them right on load and just say zero milliseconds uh, we want it to start um, but there are so many options with this um, I think this may have been doable on the old webflow interactions I'm not exactly sure because I don't think I ever used version one, but I uh, interactions I2, you can't unfortunately set a delay. So this is a workaround to that. Hopefully uh, you liked it. We'll see ya.